It's the Rule of Nerds. And this is our review of Wonder Woman. Here we go. All right, so Wonder Woman, by any metric, has become a success. You know, read the reviews. Everybody's got rave reviews for this one. 93% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Box office, it's a success. Here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. it got, uh, I think, the second biggest opening day of the year. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that beat it was, uh, th th this was in a press release by uh, Warner Brothers Philippines, uh, Fast 8, which happened to open on a, not only a weekend, but a holiday. Yes. So, uh, box office success, critical success. Uh, and I think... This film really deserves everything that it's being, uh, all the all the credit that it's being placed upon, mm -hmm. right? So, for me, everything about it was good. As a not just as a superhero movie, as an action movie, yeah. You know, the action worked, the comedy worked, the emotional resonance worked. I really like this movie. How about you? Yeah, um, you know, when people ask me, okay, so finally it's out. A lot of people were super excited about this, uh, excited slash anxious. Mm -hmm. So when it finally came out, my basic feeling is that I love, 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 love the first two acts of the movie. And for me, it's very classically structured. It really has three acts. The first two acts were like, I, I cannot even begin to heap praise on it. I think they faltered a little bit on the final act though. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on. But basically the movie was divided into three. Mm -hmm. It was the origin story, which is the first act. The stunning, stunningly uh, photographed first act. Beautiful setting, yeah. I don't think we've ever had an origin story as well filmed, as well written, as well acted as this one. Mm -hmm. This is the, the origin you know, story that we have been thirsting for. Uh, excellent cast. You know, you had Connie Nielsen, you had the, the incredible Robin Wright. Um, it, it sort of like leaked out of the whole dark DC universe. Yes. Everything was bright and well lit and nothing was corny about it. Yeah. You know, obviously yeah. we're talking about something that's so fantastic and so unrealistic but at, at the same time you're so in it you yes. you everything was perfect uh, and then of course you had the, the second act which is um, Wonder Woman coming into her own it's the mm -hmm. discovery of who she was yep. and you know it, it climaxes into that iconic you know uh, marching through the battlefield scene and what a great scene which will probably go down in history as one of the best superhero scenes ever yes if not the best. I mean, it's probably fighting for the best single scene in a superhero movie ever. It was, um, and then the third act is her as Wonder Woman. Yeah. The fulfilled part. And I guess for me, it was that part that they, they, okay, what made for me the first two acts incredible was that everything was character based. Yes. The writing was so strong, um, the acting was spot on. And you know, like when something funny, like in the Marvel movie and in some DC movies, some of it is, is very gag based. Here, the humor is is based on the characters. Yeah. It's, it's when, when they start making funny, you, you don't laugh in a ha ha, you know, Hulk smashing Loki in that kind of way. But yeah. it's more of like, because you know who Wonder Woman is, yeah. you know who Diana of Themyscira is, you know who Steve Trevor is. That's what make the jokes funny. Yeah. And, and, and that, I think, was like brilliant about it. It wasn't a, a slapstick kind of gag. Uh, and of course, the acting was perfect. Now, for me, the first um, Wonder Woman action scene, mm -hmm. when she marched into the, into the battlefield, it was so small, but I have never been so exhilarated watching an action scene. And for me, that was one of my biggest criticism of, of the modern comic book uh, movies. I love them, don't get me wrong, but the battle scenes turn out to be the ones that I look forward to the least. Yeah. Because it's just yeah. a lot of noise, a lot of metal flying, yeah. a lot of... And most of the time, you don't even see what's going on. 
you're sort of like barraged with this sort of like um, uh, you're pummeled yeah. by images that you don't really know anymore what's happening it's all CGI so when you see something that's choreographed graceful yeah. um, almost like a ballet almost yeah. like a dance you know what's going on you're so into it so when the third act came in and then here comes the CGI yes here comes the special effects which surprisingly weren't that great it yeah. looked like <laughs> you know 10 years ago yeah I, I think if there there's one criticism about it it's it's the CGI it effect, was right? like hmm you know and uh, I'm very conflicted with uh, the villain Ares uh -huh. because uh, I like it but I don't like it mm -hmm. Um, for me, it, it, it suffered a little bit of the whole Enchantress thing. Like, when when the climax happened, mm -hmm. I was like, so what exactly happened? What was the power that defeated... Yeah. You know you know what I mean? Like, the when the Enchantress was, like, doing her thing while watching Suicide Squad, I was like, what what is she doing? What what are her powers? What, what are we exactly afraid of? What, wasn't it the, the power of Zeus? Uh, yeah, what, but... Because the... the, the for spoiler alert, the the ending is this big reveal yeah. where Wonder Woman isn't actually made sculpted out of, out clay, of clay and is actually the daughter of Zeus. Yes, and uh, at the end of it, they acknowledge it in the in the big climax between Ares and Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason the the lightning powers the lightning come out. Thing, yeah, uh, I think Ares whips out the lightning powers, mm -hmm. which is of course iconic to Zeus. To Zeus, and then. Uh, it's stolen by Diana. <laughs> I know, but, but that's the thing. For me, like, it, it was unlike the second act uh -huh. where she started realizing her powers. Yeah. Even actually in the first act when she first um, uh, did her bracelet thing mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. uh, um, with Robin Wright. Yeah. Like, she was discovering, okay, so this is what I can do. Yeah. So when, when that happened, it's like you think Ares is all-powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You, he did this whole Magneto thing where he can, you know, uh, uh, do, uh, but not just with metal, but also yeah. with rock and everything. So it's kind of like it wasn't shown exactly what his powers are, yeah. how powerful his powers are, and how did Diana suddenly beat him. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, a perfectly good reason or explanation, but that's just my point. Yeah. That it wasn't... Um, perfectly explained yeah. the way the first two acts unfolded yeah it, it should have come across clear clearly right? for for casual fans who are just mm -hmm. watching this and aren't really sure of the whole wonder woman mythos yeah yeah so i guess it's that whole everything that the two first two parts did right mm -hmm. it's like the complete opposite with the third act uh -huh. so but but other than that i will not say that the third act ruined the movie mm -hmm. definitely not i would say more of the first two acts are so good that you will forgive the weaker yeah. um, third act yeah. uh, for it. So uh, that said, I super uh, love the movie. Yeah, I, I think you mentioned that one of the things that you really liked from the first two acts mm -hmm. was the acting. Yes, right? yes. So the cast was, uh, well, we, we'll get into talking about the cast performances right yes. now. But you know, going into this movie, people were still unsure whether Gal Gadot had the chops yeah. To carry her own solo movie. In my opinion, Gal Gadot is the best um, superhero casting since Robert Downey Jr. I have yet to see a more perfect fit. I must say, when she was first announced, I was like, "Who is this girl? Why didn't they get somebody more like like iconic? You know, like like uh, Scarlett Johansson? You know?" Or... No, I don't. I don't agree because I I've loved her since the Fast and the Furious movies. So because for me, I I, I I mean, like I found her pretty, but I'm like. For this major yeah. uh, uh, a film, who is this girl? And then I'm like, now I cannot think of anybody That's else true. to play this role. And yeah. it's perfect casting. And as much as you can rattle off other perfect casting yeah, uh, yeah. for for even in the Marvel universe, the DC universe, yeah. this is perfect. And I, I think what she really what she really brought was that 
physicality yes. that you wanted to see from a Wonder Woman. You know, so you could have made um, more iconic uh, casting there, someone more famous, someone with more experience as an actor. Or in the beginning, bigger boobs. Yeah. Remember, this, is yeah. One, this was actually <laughs> one of the biggest issues earlier on that she didn't have big enough boobs to play Wonder Woman. Or, or not even just that, but like the frame that she had mm -hmm. when she was first cast she was really skinny like yes. like supermodel skinny mm -hmm. and uh she wasn't even wasn't really able to put like bulk on yes. but you can see that she has that physicality to be a wonder woman in this universe and what i loved about her is that uh she is everything even as a woman like yeah. she can be pretty she can be cute she can be gorgeous she can be sexy without really getting um you know like like cheap it's like name it name the adjective she can do it and it's part of her arsenal yeah. she can be badass she can be drop dead gorgeous she's just perfect yeah you you mentioned the great performance from Robin Wright. Oh now, yes. Who would have thought that who she would, would be thought? that big of a badass, right? Yeah. But and, and I had to ask myself, is this Robin Wright? I couldn't believe myself. Like, yeah. who is this? <laughs> well, Amazon. She's a fantastic. Yeah. But I I think that uh, one of the underrated aspects of. Uh, this casting was Chris Pine. Yes, I think he put an amazing performance as Steve Trevor, and that chemistry. Yeah, that chemistry that he has with uh, Gal Gadot was just stunning. And he did. She did this very difficult act of being a major character, but at the same time a foil. Mm -hmm. He had to be Wonder Woman's foil. It's not Steve Trevor's movie. It's Wonder Woman's movie, and Steve Trevor being who he is helped us understand or help highlight who Wonder Woman was. Yeah. So it's incredible how he was able to not steal the scenes from Gal Gadot, but at the same time, enrich her, but not disappear in the background. Yeah. Amazing performance. And that role was really crucial. If you've seen the yes. movie, you know that he has this big scene at the end where mm -hmm. he essentially serves as the emotional core of this movie. Yes. And that that is not an easy task to do. Chris Pine great performance and from him can i just you know since we talk about timeline can i just say how much i loved how genius it was uh for them to have uh executed this origin story wherein you start off in the modern uh justice league era you jump back in time yeah. which explains because in the trailer i was like i wonder how they'll do this because this is like you know the earlier world wars yeah. and then and then how, how will this be the same girl but they did it perfectly and even at the ending I, I really just wanted to stand up and clap at the end of it everything was was neatly sewn up and tied up yeah. beautiful yeah I, I think one of the great things was they really brought some heavy hitters yes to, to, to play roles in this movie mm -hmm. knowing that they would be in only one movie yes right so so yeah. this was perfect as a standalone film sure there are some ways it ties together yeah. in the dceu which we are gonna get into it mm -hmm. in a bit but uh they really made sure that this was gonna be a good standalone movie uh, as a as a movie in itself it was great and even if it were not part of any bigger universe this would be one of the best movies this year yes and that was the question uh, are we saying this because the past dc movies were horrible are we saying this is incredible compared to suicide squad and bbs no this movie is good period yeah like i said i just have a little you know quibble about the third act but that aside this is an incredible movie yeah so let's talk about the bigger dceu as a whole you know what you can really notice from wonder woman is that director patty jenkins mm -hmm. directing her first movie since monster the oscar winning 14 monster 14 years ago yes you know they really gave her free reign to tell the story that she wanted to tell in the way that she wanted to tell it actually that's what they were saying that uh, as opposed to bvs and suicide squad where there were a lot of last minute reshoots they didn't have that with this one yeah and they say that you know you can really see it because you can see the vision of the director in the way the movie played out and it was it was really given a freedom to break out of that uh, that tone mm -hmm. that the, the DCEU has already established yes. you know we've had three previous movies already uh, man of steel mm -hmm. batman versus superman and mm -hmm. suicide squad 
two of those were directed by Zack Snyder, who of course is in all of our prayers yes. after the personal tragedy that of course. that he's he's going through right now, uh, uh, having to drop out of Justice League because of it. So uh, because uh, of a family tragedy. Yeah, all, all of our prayers to, with, with Zack Snyder and his family, but. Uh, you know that that tone that was established in his movies, mm-hmm. and also to some extent was uh, adopted by uh, Suicide Squad. You know, it was very dark. Mm-hmm. It was violent. I think this is what Wonder Woman had. Yeah. It had so much joie de vivre. Yeah. It had so much life. There, there's the 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 visual life, which is it had more color than the yeah. other two movies. But at the same time, it had a, a heart beating yeah. inside. And yeah. Wonder Woman, the character, leapt out of the screen and was a living creature. Yeah. It wasn't some darker version of the comic book yeah. characters. It was a living, breathing, you know, fully realized character. And I, I, I think that that's what makes it really... Uh, they established this as early as the first act that yes. we were talking about. All the scenes at Themyscira, so colorful, so beautiful, yeah. and so well lit. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Compare it to all of the other DCU movies. It's so well lit. And it's nice that they don't have to be a slave to what the bigger universe is. And everything, even the, the animation during the, the whole telling of the story oh, yeah, of, great of story Zeus. It's right. not, it's, you don't know if it, is it animated? Is it? It's beautiful. Everything about it is just well crafted, and I just can't believe, despite all the rumors that Wonder Woman was going to be just like the first two, Suicide Squad and BVS, yeah. we're just so glad that it turned out the way it did. So, this might be what the strength of the DCEU will be moving forward, yes. right? If you notice Marvel, they're uh, very strict with their continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite getting some different talented directors on board, you know that this is the, the Feige vision. Yes. It's Kevin Feige's vision. Yeah. That's why the MCU is so uh, interconnected mm. and everything is integral to the larger the larger whole. But this might be what the DCEU can have going for it. We already know that they're bringing in some really good directorial talent. We, we've heard rumors about Matt Reeves coming in. Uh, we know James Wan is doing mm. Aquaman. And most recently, Joss Whedon. Yes. So, given that we know that the studio isn't always going to interfere and screw with the movies yeah. like uh, what they did in Suicide Squad, and they let Patty Jenkins do this, how do you feel about the movies moving forward, especially with... Uh, whatever Joss Whedon's holding, you know, he's taken over for yes. uh, Zack Snyder on Justice League. Mm-hmm. I think there are some more scenes they're reshooting, mm-hmm. uh, additional scenes, and also the editing will be in Joss Whedon's hands. So how, how do you feel about Justice League? It's coming out this year. It is. And uh, well, the big question really on everyone's mind was, did this movie, Wonder Woman, really save the DCEU? And uh, in a lot of ways, yes, because um, in my opinion, uh, it was really like third strike and you're out. And I think if they failed with this one, yeah. it would be very difficult to climb out of this hole. But because of the, the, the ray of light that Wonder Woman is, literally and figurative, uh, figuratively, uh, suddenly things are looking up for the DCEU. With the directors on board, the talent on board, uh, I think they are slowly, it was a painful lesson to learn, but I think they are learning the lessons, the right lessons, and hopefully they apply it in the future movies. And you know what? Regardless of whoever you're rooting for, whether you're a hater or you're a fan, I think the fans will only benefit if both companies came out with awesome superhero movies. Yeah. So hopefully this is the start of uh, a new life for the DCEU and we cannot be happier. Okay, you also mentioned earlier, I, I remember, something interesting about when Gal Gadot was first cast, mm-hmm. uh, some fans were clamoring for uh, someone with uh, bigger boobs. Yes, right. and she addressed it in many interviews. Yeah. And so something that we need to discuss here is the, you know, it, it's going to be a little bit awkward because we're two guys yeah. uh, the mansplaining this to, yeah. to the camera, right? But uh, we, we'd be remiss if we don't talk about mm-hmm. the feminist angle of yes. this all, right? So, I, I think one of the things I really liked about this movie was that uh, it's a it's a stars uh, it's a big tentpole movie mm-hmm. that stars a female lead mm-hmm. directed by a female director. Yes, and so you could really tell that this was told through the female gaze. Yes, and that's not something you see. I know in superhero movies often, right? And for it to work this well, 
whether financially, uh, blockbuster-wise, or critical, uh, you know, critics-wise, uh, this is something that really sends out a very strong message to Hollywood. Yeah, I, I think one of my favorite scenes there was early on in the first act that you you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Chris Pine's uh, Steve Trevor uh, being captured by the Amazons. Yeah. And then he takes a bath, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then he slips out of the bath where mm -hmm. he's almost completely naked, naked, which is something they do to women, to women in all the Hollywood time. movies all the time. Yeah. But here, you see, you know, I, I think that was a, a funny wink wink at yes. that whole uh, male gaze thing mm -hmm. that uh, superhero movies tend to have. But you can also notice, like, even the rest of the way, uh, you never feel that uh, the character of Diana was sexualized. Exactly. Like, all of the shots they had, she's wearing a, a skimpy outfit, mm -hmm. especially for that time. And they had, they had, uh, excuses to do so there was this one scene where uh she was trying on clothes yeah and then uh she's told well, why don't you take off what you're wearing and yeah. tie this on yeah and she starts to take off the the coat that she's wearing and she's wearing just her costume underneath, underneath. but if you can notice the camera cut they don't show you any skin exactly also later on in the movie there's a there's a, a love scene a love scene implied implied because you don't actually ever yeah. see it yeah uh, it cuts out the outside the window mm -hmm. And you, it's just very classic yeah, filmmaking. It's yeah. just implied that uh, Diana and Steve um, had some fun yeah. in, in that room. So again, it's such a great example of uh, you know it, it really sheds light on what we've come to know as normal, the the, the sexualization of uh, female characters in movies. But you can do it this way, and the movie doesn't suffer one bit. And you can really see the, 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 the female point of view. Uh, we, we had about three major villains here. The most interesting villain was the woman, Dr. Poise, uh, incredible villain choice, by the way. And then with the minor casts, the one that really leaps out was Etta Candy. So, you know, it's really like, wow, a lot of really strong women characters and you don't feel like it's being forced on you. Yeah. It doesn't feel like, okay, look at them. They're really giving extra points to the women characters because yeah. it's a woman director. You don't feel it at all. It just is. Yeah. They I just happen I think to be great that was. I think that was really the great thing about it. If you just follow Diana's story mm -hmm. in this movie, uh, she didn't have to be a woman. Yeah. This was just a... The, the more important parts of her character was her being a, you know, a fish out of water, yeah. taken out of Themyscira mm -hmm. and into the, the whole World War I scene. Mm -hmm. Very fish out of water and then it, it was really just a coming of age story, right? Exactly. Uh, you can see some similarities, you can draw some parallels to Thor yeah. and some parallels to Captain America, mm -hmm. the first movie, the first Avenger. With the time thing. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it... it it was exactly that. It was such a strong uh, feminist movie without it having to be on the script. Exactly. They didn't have to have any lines saying... Uh, it didn't feel like it had a feminist agenda at all. Yeah. It was just a well-crafted movie. That was that happened to come from the, the point of view of a female director who knew how to tell good stories. Exactly. So th I think that's the interesting thing. We had the dis this discussion early on when we yeah. first started this uh, YouTube channel, right? About how uh, uh, films like this don't usually get mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. And I think this is our chance to really show Hollywood that we support this kind of movie. Exactly. I, you know, I, I, I said this after watching the movie. I, I told the people I watched with, I don't usually do repeat viewings of movies yeah. that don't have Star or Wars in the title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think I'm actually going out and watching this again just to prove a point. Yeah. And I hope you guys all do too. Yes. All right, so what about you? What do you think? Uh, this was a mouthful and I'm pretty sure you have so many things and I think five, ten years down the line, we will still be talking about when Wonder Woman finally came out and the effects, the ripples it had on the superhero movie industry. Yeah. So uh, tell us what you think. What were your favorite, um, you know, did you like it? Did you not like it? What were your favorite parts of the movie? What were the parts you didn't like? Put it all in the comment section. Yeah. And I think it's safe to say there's gonna be a Wonder Woman too. Yes. So let us know what you want to see from that movie. Which villains? You wanna see a cheetah? You wanna see who? Okay, so there you go. Uh, that's our um, uh, review. Uh, as you can see, we're very excited to do this for Wonder Woman. All right, so please uh, 
subscribe to our channel, uh, YouTube channel. It's The Rule of Nerds, but also check out our um, social media accounts. Uh, it's The Rule of Nerds on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as for our personal accounts, uh, check me out at Chico Garcia at um, Instagram, I mean on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can follow me at M underscore Volante on Twitter and JM underscore Volante on Instagram. Nerds, Nerds out! Here we go!